my name is Sean Mock, as you know by now. <laughs> and uh, I am the uh, Group Chief Operating Officer of uh, Chai Mata Sarawak Berhad. And currently, I'm also the uh, Interim Head of the Property Division. So uh, I believe that's one of the few reasons I've, I'm sitting right in front of you here. <laughs> Just to wind the clock back a little bit, I mean, CMS has been involved in property for a, a very long time. Um, CMS, as most uh, locals know, uh, holds quite a fair bit of land across Kuching and now all the way up to uh, Samalaju. So uh, CMS's involvement in, in property started from, uh, I think, very humble beginnings. I think CMS has always been known as a cement producer, construction, quarries, and uh, we've been serving the community in every spectrum of, of, of uh, the community from the uh, low income in affordable housing all the way to uh, a more upmarket uh, product in most recently Rivervale. Yeah. So that's effectively what we have done to date. In property, the fundamental has always got to be addressed first and foremost, you know. So I think at CMS Property now, we, we are really studying the demographics of Sarawak, Kuching, uh, specifically, in great depth. Because the worst thing we could do is create the best product, but it does not serve the community or the market, you know. So... I think uh, what we are uh, a developer that's not shy to build something that maybe some people may go, what are they doing, you know? Because every time if you've delivered something like say Rivervale, you always expect the next thing to be bigger and better. But I think on the same token, there's a market to be served and to be catered to. And because of the spread of land that we have, some being in Samariang in Kuching, for instance, and some that are quite prime in and around where we are actually, uh, but once again, we have to, to pass the litmus test of what is acceptable to the market to begin with. Uh, I, I, I won't be shy and lie that we are in the business of making money to begin with. You know? So there has to be a, a balance between what the market requires and what it is that we are able to deliver to ensure that uh, we as a business are sustainable. But trend-wise, um, I don't mind the word trend. It, it, it's a word I, I probably, you know, caution against in that uh, what we can do here is to adapt trends or products from other places, but we really need to contextualize them to the local market. You know, so I think a very successful one, as you just mentioned, is, is River Vale. You know, there's a bit of a twist to a, a semi There's the gated uh, community aspect which is something that's very desired by people of that price bracket that can afford that. And for the apartments, on the other hand, um, I humbly would think that we have the best facility, you know, on, on grade. You know, it's, it's very, it's lush, it's uh, attractive. Uh, and I think it also caters to a wide spectrum of the community. But most importantly, I believe that the price point caters to the market. You know, so we, we tried to balance out what we could give and versus what returns that we could also enjoy. I'm fairly new to the group. <clears throat> you know, I've only joined on the 1st of May. But uh, having consulted to the group and knowing the pipeline that the group has gone through in the many years, I would have no doubt that the most challenging project for the group would probably be Samalaju. You know, that's a, a, as green feel as it gets. Uh, it also is a, a catalyst for many things that are planned for the state underscore. Uh, so for us to have gone into that part of the state and have to be the almost like a, a lost leader, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is, is, is quite far, but I think it's something that the group understands it's, it's, it's a responsibility one, and it's also a privilege to be asked to do that. We've got residential developments there in the apartments which uh, for all intensive purposes, like any developer, we build to sell. We don't build to hold and rent. But that's the scenario that we're in. 
But uh, you know what? We, we make the best of what we have, and thankfully we're over 90% occupied there because the industry does need decent accommodation. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the selling will come, I believe, in, in time. But once again, the horizon for an industrial park of that scale is typically longer. That is challenging. I mean, the hotel that we've built there has been, it, it is a stunning piece of work. You know, it's, it's delivered by our current group managing director, Dr. Isaac Lugun. So, so I think that would be the most challenging, <laughs> as far as I'm aware. Um, I think where we suffered more is in the sales aspect. Because clearly, any property developer, we have overhanging stock. So in the uh, height of the pandemic, where you can't even get out of your house to meet a potential buyer, and most of the time, for anyone that has ever bought a home or is even looking to buy an investment property, it typically stands at one of your top spends in your life, a home. So when you're unable to touch, feel, see something like that, it's, it's going to hurt you know, for a developer. So that would probably be the, the, the most painful. In terms of project rollout, I think it's relative because everyone suffered through the three months of the full lockdown. You know? So I'm not going to kick and scream about that. We, we shouldn't anyway. Um, so construction, delivery of our projects-wise, I think everyone is in equilibrium. So, uh, but on the sales front, yes, clearly that hurt us. We tend to get the whole spectrum of, of bias. Um, I don't think there's any one segment that we would prioritize over the other. Uh, I think at the end of the day, what we want to deliver as a responsible uh, and industry-leading developer is, is a good product, good value in, in a good location. You know, I think at the end, uh, the saying always goes, the customer is always right, you know. So, <laughs> so exactly, and, and the customer comes in a spread of, of, of demographics. So we, we just have to be ready to, to cater to, to all. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, I think that's the hallmark of any good developer. And we hope to improve on that if, if ever there was any shortfalls. Yeah. So far, even the things that we're selling today, because they are priced right and they are in the right location and we're delivering the right product, we have not had to bend over to those extremes where we're giving, you know, say bulk discounts or, you know, installment payment schemes or so on and so forth. So I think at the end, we also have to remember that the developer and the buyer are not the only two people involved in the transaction. There's another very, very key member in this equation, which is the financier, the bank. You know, so when we develop, one of the key aspects is to ensure that the valuation stacks up. And when a bank gets involved with valuing our development or future developments, uh, they will always look at the location, the product, and the price. I'm one that loves the, the long-term story. You know, so I, I firmly feel that Samaryang is something that the group can be very proud of. When I look back at the group's track record, it has consistently delivered homes for the community there, and yet it's been also sustainable to the group. A community of almost 30,000, if not more actually, has been built and is now burgeoning. And, and that's where a cohesive and a progressive master plan for the area is definitely required. Because I, I, I do feel it, it is irresponsible to just keep building homes and then not have a, a, an, an industry or the future of a community not thought through. Yeah, so any successful master plan, especially one of that scale, is one which is very well thought out for the future. In the next five years, for, for, for us, introspectively, we would love to have a very robust, creative property division, you know, one that can serve our land bank and the community around it to, to think long term. I, I think that when you build a home or an office block, 
or an industrial building for that matter, you cannot think of it as a singular form. There are many, many aspects to it that ensure the success of it as a singular form along with its environment. You know? So if whatever that we build or we develop can ultimately enrich the people in the house because we've A, provided them a safe environment to be in, a roof over their head, don't have to worry about that. Um, it's also enabled them to grow their family unit. But on the same, on the flip side, it's very important that we also enrich the community around us. You know, when I was working in uh, Sydney, I remember Sydney City Council would used to make us jump through like a million hoops. But now that I've come back to, to Malaysia, I understand why. You know, the councils there are very responsible for the future of the city. So you as a singular standalone glorified building may be fantastic, but what they would like to inculcate in you as a, us as a developer then was that you must remember that you cannot be devaluing people around you. You need to be collectively enriching each other. You know. So I remember the, the ridiculous design request that they've asked us to tweet just to ensure that a view corridor is maintained so that the building behind us would not lose its value. You know. So I think that's one thing that if we could adopt successfully, would be, I think, the, 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 the greatest uh, prize of, of, of all because uh, development is such a huge uh, key in the, in the growth of any city or community. So it is important that we, we care for whatever is around us, yeah, for the collective good of all. I think for, for any young aspiring homeowner, um, do it young. Remember that one of the key elements in your home ownership is uh, the support of the banks. So when you're young, you can borrow for the longest possible period. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm being very practical about this. You know, uh, and uh, one of our directors on the main board, uh, Dr. Sri Makayam, he's a property player true and true. I mean, one of his quotes is to beg, steal, and borrow for your first home. <laughs> I mean, he says it in a very uncanny manner, but it, it is pivotal, you see, um, and your first home does not necessarily have to be the most glamorous home, but once you have a home, it provides you with the foundation, the security to then not have to worry about the roof over your head. And then your other pursuits can come thereafter. So I, I do see the wisdom in, in, in that uncanny quote where, where it, it is vital. And uh, so for, for anyone that's young, aspiring, yeah, be, be wise with your money. Um, I think uh, the joys of life sometimes can be sacrificed for a little later in life. Just get the fundamentals right, like say your home, for instance. And maybe the three series can wait, but for now the MyV will do just fine. It still gets you from point A to point B. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, maybe that's my... Uh, piece of advice.